So today we are going to discuss the genetic control of protein synthesis. We are going to discuss how proteins are formed inside the cell and how their formation or their synthesis is being controlled by the uh, genes that are present in the DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid. In the last lecture, we discussed that inside the cell there is a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, there is a, there are uh, chromosomes. Chromosomes are in 23 pairs in the human body and uh, they are made of histones and deoxyribonu uh, deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. The DNA again we discussed is normally present in a helical form and is made of three components a phosphoric acid, a deoxyribose sugar and a nitrogenous base. Then we discussed that there are four types of nitrogenous bases adenine, cytosine, thymine and guanine. And uh, depending upon the type of nitrogenous base that is attached with the phosphoric acid and sugar, we have four nucleotides. And, due, and uh, with the combination of different types of nucleotides, uh, we can get a lot of combination and the whole DNA is basically made of this combination of these four nucleotides. Today we are going to discuss how this genetic um, structure, how this structure of DNA is helping in the formation of proteins. So let's start with the genetic code. What basically is genetic code? Genetic code is nothing but it is a sequence of nitrogenous bases that are present in the uh, DNA. For example, it is a small segment of the DNA which uh, is combined over here but is being uh, separated lower down. It is made of uh, guanine, thymine and cytosine. This combination of these three or this triplet it is basically determining a genetic a genetic code this genetic code is very important it is not only uh, helping in a transfer of a hereditary into the uh, siblings the children but it is also helping in the formation of proteins uh, in a method which we are going to discuss so genetic code is nothing but it is a sequence of nitrogenous bases that are attached with uh, in us uh, in with each other in a dna so if we see this g t and c it is one genetic code it is determining one amino acid then c a g is another code then if we see t c g will be another and a g c will be another code how this code is helping in the formation of protein so let's start there are three important step, steps first is transcription or formation of the messenger RNA then uh, we have the transfer RNA or the anticodons and finally we have the translation or the formation of the proteins when formation when the formation of a specific type of protein is desirable or is required then um, an enzyme known as RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase comes and attaches to a specific point of the DNA known as the promoter region. RNA polymerase comes attaches to a specific point in the of the DNA known as the promoter region, which normally is also known as Tata box. T A T A. Thymine adenine thymine adenine. So RNA polymerase identifies the uh, promoter region and it first of all it unwinds it unwinds uh, the DNA is present in the helical form so it first unwinds it opens up the uh, and then separates it then starts separating the DNA it separates a specific portion of DNA that is present between the promoter region and chain terminating region when it separates the two strains of the DNA, it is basically forming a messenger RNA. For it will identify one strand of the uh, DNA, and with that portion of the DNA, it will add complementary units. For a guanine, it will add cytosine, and for adenine, it will add uracil instead of thymine in the dna for adenine it is thymine but in the rna the adenine has uracil and uh, and
and for the deoxyribose sugar it will aid a ribose sugar so basically RNA polymerase is coming it is attaching to the promoter region in the Tata box it is unwinding the DNA and it is separating the DNA and using one of the strand of the DNA DNA is basically made of two strands by using one of the strand of the DNA it is basically adding some nucleotides and forming a, an RNA known as messenger RNA is RNA polymerase moves along it unwinds it separates the DNA and it uh, forms a complementary complementary units of uh, that DNA portion and form the messenger RNA when it reaches the chain terminating region it stopped it stops and a segment and a small portion of RNA known as messenger RNA is formed this is known as this process is known as transcription so transcription is also known as the formation of messenger rna and the codons here we discuss that this is the specific triplets or the combination of nitrogenous bases in the dna are known as genetic codes it is code but when it is copied on a messenger RNA then this uh, combination of three specific bases will be known as codons so these three are known as codon and the green portion is basically showing the RNA polymerase which is moving ahead and is basically opening up the DNA and forming the messenger RNA up till here the story is inside the nucleus once the once the messenger RNA once the messenger RNA has been formed this is the messenger RNA rather it's the pre messenger RNA some changes will occur to the pre messenger um, RNA like it will have some units like exons and enterons the exon will determine some genetic sequence but interon will not a process known as splicing will occur and it will uh, it will make changes in the messenger rna so that it can uh, code for different uh, more than one proteins from here the messenger rna will get out of the nucleus and it will come into the cytoplasm inside the cytoplasm there is another uh, RNA known as transfer RNA. Transfer RNA is basically present in the form of a clover leaf. It is basically present in the shape of a clover leaf, and it will bring it will bring amino acids. There are twenty types of amino acids which are present in proteins, and each transfer RNA is specific for one amino acid. So, how the transfer RNA identifies the messenger RNA it has some specific uh, area known as the anticodon for each codon for each triplet of messenger RNA there is a complementary area on the transfer RNA known as the anticodon and they are very much specific and that transfer RNA is also specific for one amino acid so that specific amine uh, transfer RNA can bind only that specific portion of the messenger RNA and one specific amino acid so there are basically 20 types of transfer RNA one for each type of amino acid has an has anti codon for each codon so 20 types of transfer RNA one for each type of amino acid and has a an anti codon for each type of codon codons are present on the messenger rna messenger rna coming is coming out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and here it is attaching with the transfer rna but here is something more to the story transfer rna cannot bind itself to the messenger rna it will need the help of ribosomal rna only when the messenger rna is attached to the ribosome only then can transfer RNA come and bring an amino acid and attached 
an amino acid to the messenger RNA and help in the formation of protein. So we have a combination of three RNAs or ribonucleic acid. One is the messenger RNA, other is the transfer RNA and the third is the ribosomal RNA. All of these uh, RNAs are also coded or also formed in the nucleus but they all are coming out of the nucleus and they are functioning in the cytoplasm. Once the messenger RNA comes out of the nucleus, it gets attached to the uh, ribosome. Ribosomes are normally present on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum and it has two portions, a large subunit and a small subunit. Within this large and sub, small subunit, the messenger RNA which has come out of the nucleus get attached. Once it get attached, it has three specific sites. A site, P site and E site. A for activate, um, in, uh, attachment, P is um, power or E is exit. The A, P and E sites can be further defined and explained but uh, that is not the scope of this lecture. We simply uh, will uh, discuss that there are again two, two um, two specific sites on the messenger RNA. One is the starting, uh, one is the starting uh, portion which is normally uh, formed of AUG, adenine, uracil or guanine. Normally these three, uh, these three bases are present in the starting portion. And we have three, uh, three combination or triplets in the stop portion because we need a, a specific amount of protein to be formed so we, uh, so we need a starting point as well as a stopping point because we do not need a large amount of protein to be formed we need a specific amount of protein to be formed to be coded by the messenger RNA so there must be a starting point and a stopping point once the starting point get attached to the ribosome in a transfer RNA a transfer RNA combines with two ATP that are energy uh, currency and amino acids. Energy is released, the amino acids are combined with the AMP which is formed from the ATP, from the ATP uh, with the help of energy and then amino acid get attached to the transfer RNA. Once it is attached to the transfer RNA, the combination of transfer RNA and amino acid get attached to the ribosome and the messenger RNA. So amino acid combined with uh, ATP releases energy and convert into amino acid and AMP. Then it is uh, transferred or um, attached to the transfer RNA. Amino acid is transferred to the transfer RNA due to the energy released and it forms a combination of amino acid and transfer RNA. The combination of amino acid and transfer RNA get attached to the starting point of the messenger RNA to the starting uh, starting point of the messenger RNA and it moves along. It moves along. Then another transfer RNA with another amino acid or it is amino acid 1 then another amino acid 2 then another amino acid 3 and so on amino acid till amino acid 20 they come and attach to one another they come and attach to one another when when second amino acid comes then two more ATPs are required to attach the second amino acid with the pre-existing amino acid when the third amino acid comes then two more ATPs are used to attach the third amino acid with the uh, pre-existing two amino acid then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh and a lot of combinations, a lot of combinations can be formed and it is basically forming the proteins. One amino acid attached with another, then there are two amino acids, then three, then four and the attachment of 20 different amino acids in, 20, in different, in thousands of combination like one, two, three or one, three, four or four, six, eight or eight, eleven, thirteen in any combination it can form a lot of protein it can form a lot of protein so 
we have the genetic code in the dna the genetic code is basically present in the dna it is formed it is transferred the dna combines with the rna polymerase it opens up and the rna polymerase uses the one side of the uh, dna and forms the messenger rna the messenger rna comes out of the uh, nucleus inside the cytoplasm it gets attached to the ribosome when it gets attached to the ribosome the transfer rna keep on coming and keep on bringing the amino acids amino acids keep on getting attached to one another they start at one point and when the ribosome when the ribosome reach the stopping region which normally are a u uracil adenine adenine uracil adenine guanine or uracil guanine adenine you can remember it by you are away you are gone or you go away then it stop and this is basically between the limit of start and stop is the limit of protein then we will discuss another important topic uh, which is related to this thing that is the control of genetic protein uh, or the uh, genes control of genetic uh, the genes which are forming the protein we are seeing that the orders for the formation of proteins are coming from the dna through the messenger rna and with the help of the um, transfer rna they are being decoded if you see if you see the, the the rna polymerase is basically acting as a master chef it is making a nice beautiful uh, recipe and sending the recipe to the uh, cytoplasm that recipe which is coding a specific dish can only be decoded with the help of ribosomal rna and with the help of the transfer rna so uh, and how the amount is controlled